Hey, how's everybody doing today? And I know it's going to be a great day. And we got a wonderful God that's looking over us, that's taking care of us. We are blessed beyond measures. Maybe you don't understand it and maybe you don't see it, but I'm going to tell you right now. You are blessed in the name of Jesus because Jesus made it possible for us to be blessed. We do not have to live a destructive life anymore. We can live above destruction. We can live above destruction. We can live in the peace and the joy of God. All we got to do is follow Jesus, you understand? We don't have to live a life of sin. We can live a life of righteousness right now through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. God has made a way for us to escape from temptation. And all we got to do is use the tools that he gave us. And we don't have to live in sin. We don't have to feed sin. You understand? Because we got a mighty God that's working for us. We got the all-powerful God that's working for us. We got his son. We got the Holy Spirit. We got the word of God. And they all are one working for us. You got to understand that. And you got to let that become a part of you. So you don't have to feed sin anymore. So you don't have to let sin control you anymore. You understand? So you can live above sin. So you can live in the righteousness. So that you can treat people right. So you can respect yourself and others. You understand? So you can treat yourself right. See, there's all kind of blessings that come through Jesus Christ. There's all kind of blessings that comes from the Father. You got to understand that if you want these blessings today, they for you right now. They for you right now. Now you got to do is give God honor. All you got to do is give Jesus Christ honor. And right now I'm going to give God honor. I'm going to give Jesus Christ honor. I'm telling them all praise belongs to them. All praise belongs to Jehovah. All praise belongs to Jesus. And I give all my praise to them. That's what hallelujah mean. All praise. The highest praise you can give them, give them all praise. You don't praise nothing else. You give all praise to God. You give all praise to Jesus. And you got to understand that. You got to let that be your life. You got to let that be your life. So know what you're saying when you're saying hallelujah. You're saying I'm giving all praise to you, God. Oh, so, and you need to understand that, what you're doing. But you know, today... I got a message for you. I'm just going to read some verses and do a little explaining on the verses. But if the Spirit take me someplace, that's all right, too. But these verses are going to deal with how not to feed sin. How not to feed sin. Because, you know, we got a tendency to feed sin instead of releasing sin. Instead of letting sin go. We got a tendency to feed sin. But today I'm here to tell you, you don't have to do that no more. You don't have to feed sin when you can live above sin. But you got to be willing to live above sin. See, that is a choice that you got to make. <laughs> See, God didn't take away your choices. He still give you a choice to live in righteousness or a choice to live in sin. He give you a choice to follow Jesus or not to follow Jesus. He give you a choice to honor him or not to honor him. God hasn't took your choices away. Some people preach like he had. But let me tell you something. You still got to make choices when it comes to living a Christian life. You still got to make choices when it comes to honoring God. You still got to make choices. So what choice are you going to make today? So today I'm trying to teach you how to make the right choice and how not to follow sin and how not to feed sin. Because you don't have to. If you feed yourself righteousness, sin will die down. But if you feed your sin, sin will increase. So it's your choice. You know, that's all I can tell you. It's your choice. It's time for you to start taking some responsibility to how you're going to live. It's time for you to take responsibility. It's time to, for you to be submissive or rejective to God's word. That's yes. That's your choice. And remember, you always got a choice. But today is how not to be sin.
So I'm going to enlighten you on some things on how not to feed sin. And may this word that God had me bring it to you be a blessing to you and it open up your eyes. And not only open up your eyes, but it open up your heart. Not only open up your heart, but it open up your mind that you may receive the directions of God through Paul. That to, to do the gospel through James on how not to be sin. That's what it's all about. That's where transformation takes over when you learn not when you learn how not to be sin. So that's why I'm here to teach you about transformation. And I'm talking about the Christian perspective. You got to understand that I'm talking about the Christian's perspective. First go with me to Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. And the verse say, But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let's go to the second of that second part of that verse. And it says, Make not provision for the flesh. He's saying, Don't supply the flesh. Don't supply the flesh to fulfill the the lust thereof, to fulfill sin, to fulfill your desire of sin. But you got to understand lust. Lust is an extreme desire. It's almost like an addictive desire. You understand? But he's saying, make no provision to fulfill that extreme desire. Now, make no provision to fulfill that extreme desire. Make no way. See, sometimes you got to avoid people, places, and things in order not to fulfill that extreme desire to sin. See, sometimes you got to change people, places, and things. See, matter of fact, you don't have to. You must change people, places, and things in order not to let your sinful nature override you and you and you feed sin. So you got to change it so you don't feed sin. And one of the ways to change it, you got to go to the top of the verse. You got to go to the top of the verse now and it said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, now, if you don't want to make provision, or if you don't want to supply, if you don't want to feed sin, you got to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you got to be like Jesus Christ. You got to put on the mind of Christ. That means you got to live by the word of God. That means you got to be obedient to God. So you got to understand about Jesus. When you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus was obedient to his father. Jesus trusts his father. And you got to do the same thing with Jesus and God. You got to be obedient to him. You got to trust him. You got to put your faith in him. You got to put your life in it. You understand? So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's be Christ-like. Let's be righteous. Let's do what's right. So if we do what's right, that means we'll think right. And if we're thinking right, that means we will not be sin. You understand? And then go with me to Galatians 5.1. Galatians 5.1. This might even be a short message today, but it's going to be a good one. Galatians 5.1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. So otherwise, he says, Stay in the freedom that Christ has given you. So you've been delivered from sin. You've been delivered from the power of sin. Now you got to stay out of sin. But if you live in sin, you're not. You're going to constantly feed sin. But if you don't want to feed sin, that means you got to cut sin loose. Because God, because God and Jesus has set you free from sin. So don't go back to sinning. Don't go back to the bondage of sin. Keep yourself away from from it. Keep yourself away from the bondage of sin. Live in the righteousness of the word of God. Do what's right when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. That's what you got to understand. You got to come into obedience 
to the Holy Spirit. You got to come obedience to the word of God. And when you do that, you will not be sin because you'll be too busy feeding righteousness. You will be too busy building on God's righteousness where sin will die. Sin will die. It will die. But you got to live in the freedom that you got in Christ Jesus from the power of sin. But you got to live in that freedom. Then Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now understand that he said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you don't want to feed sin, if you don't want to continue living in sin, then you got to walk in the spirit. That means step by step, day by day. I got to live in the spirit. I got to be obedient to the spirit. I got to be obedient to the word of God. I got to do what the word says. I got to do what the spirit tell me. If the spirit tell you not to steal, don't steal. If the spirit tell you not to lie, don't lie. If the spirit tell you not to cheat, don't cheat. If the spirit tell you not to fornicate, don't fornicate. See, the spirit is going to talk to you about the right thing. If the spirit tell you not to gospel and backbite, don't gospel and backbite. Because that's the spirit of God working in. You. Let the Spirit tell you to be obedient at your job, be obedient at your job. Let the Spirit tell you to respect somebody, respect them. Because you are the light of this world. And if you're the light of the world, that means you are about good works. And if you're about good works, then that means you're about right work. And if you're about right work, that means you're about righteous work. And if you're about righteous work, that means you're about God's work. And that means you are righteous in Christ Jesus. Because now your faith is in Christ. Now your faith is in Christ. So now you're going to live out the righteous that's in Christ Jesus. Now you're going to live a righteous life and not a sinful life. You're not going to feed sin, but you're going to feed righteous. You're not going to build on sin. You're going to build on righteousness. See, that's the way That's the way life goes. The one thing you got to understand about sin, sin mean wrong. <laughs> sin mean wrong. And righteous mean right according to God. And righteous mean right according to Jesus. And righteous mean right according to God's word. And righteous mean right according to God's spirit. So if you want to walk in the spirit, you can't not live in the flesh. You cannot live in the sinful nature. And if you walk in the spirit, you will not live the lust, the lustful flesh. You will not live out the desires to sin. You will not even have a desire to sin because your desires is going to change the more you live in the spirit. See, you got to understand that the more you live in the spirit, the more the sinful nature die and the less you feed sin. And the less you feed sin, the more you destroy sin in your life. The power of sin come down, but the power of righteousness by the grace of Jesus lift up. <laughs> righteousness become your building stone. Righteousness become your foundation that you build on and not sin no more. See, you got to understand one time sin was your foundation and you fed sin and sin increased. Now that you are in Christ Jesus, righteousness is your foundation and you're living by the Spirit and now you build on righteousness and you don't, and you don't build on sin. How not to feed sin. Now, that's how you don't feed sin. Now, go with me to Luke 4.4. 4. Let's check Luke 4.4 4 out. See, God got a word for you. God always got a blessing for you, see, because God don't want you walking around feeding sin and talking about you his child. You got to understand that. If you a child of God, you ain't got no business living in sin. Your whole life should be based upon living in righteousness. Do you claim to be a child of God? Do you claim to be saved and delivered? Do you claim all that? <laughs> Do you claim to be blessed and highly favored? Well, are you living in the righteousness of God or are you feeding sin? So otherwise, are you living a simple life or are you living a righteous life? Let me tell you something. It's time to get it right. 
I don't care what nobody tell you. It's time to get it right. And you can only get it right through Christ. You can only make the right steps in your life through Christ Jesus. And the only way you're going to do that, you got to be obedient to the righteousness. See, see over here in Luke 4, 4, you got to understand this. This is another way how not to feed sin. See, this is another way on how not to feed sin. Luke 4, 4. Luke 4, 4 say, and Jesus answered him saying, and, and Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And it says that man shall not live by bread alone, by food, but by every word of God. So if you really want to live that life, that's not for the sin. That means you got to Feed yourself the word of God. You cannot live by bread. You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So you got to take God's word and make it active in your life if you don't want to live a life of sin. If you don't want to feed sin, you got to put God's words to life in you. You got to eat it. You got to digest it. And you got to make it a part of you in your spiritual world. It's got to be your mindset. You got to change your mindset from sinning to righteousness. So, in the way that you do that, you do that by the Word of God and and by applying the Word of God in your life. So, in order to apply the Word of God in your life, guess what? You got to be obedient to the Word of God. And when you're obedient to the Word of God, guess what? Then your transformation takes place. And then you can walk in love. And then you can walk in joy. And then you can walk in peace. And you won't have the frustration that sin brings you. See, then you won't have the frustration that sin bring you. See, you got to understand sin is wrong. Righteousness is right. I got to tell you that again. Because sin go against God. Anything that go against God is wrong. But anything that is righteous go with God and is for God. So when you want to know when the Spirit is talking to you, if you really want to know when the Spirit is leading you, when the Spirit talk to you, let me tell you something. The Spirit going to always tell you to do what's right in the sight of God. The Spirit of God is always going to tell you to do what's right in the sight of God. I don't care if you're at your God job. I don't care what kind of circumstances you're in. I don't care what school you at. I don't care what you're confronted with. That Spirit is there to talk to you to make sure that you make the right decision and to make sure that you do the right thing. But the only way it's going to work, you got to be open to the Spirit. You got to be willing to obey the Spirit. You got to hear the Spirit when it's speak to you. And most of all, you got to be obedient to the Spirit. So otherwise, I'm telling you, you got to do what the Spirit tell you to do. You got to do what the Spirit tell you to do. And it's only going to tell you to do what's right and what's right with God. And then when you're doing what's right with God, that's when you're living in righteousness. That's when you're living in righteousness. You got to understand that and may God bless you. But now let's go to James 4, 7, and 8. This is another way how not to feed sin. See, I know you got to be tired. See, I got tired of feeding sin because sin kept me in trouble. But I can tell you one thing. Since I've been serving God, I ain't been in no trouble. (laughs) God been blessing me. And why I've been blessing me? Because I've been doing what's right in his eyes. Not in man's eyes, but it's in his eyes. I don't follow sin. I follow righteousness. And if I got to pay a price for following righteousness, guess what? The price is worth paying. But if I got to pay a price for following sin, I don't want nothing to do with it. So I'm not following sin. And I don't want you following sin. And I don't want you feeding sin. I want you to let that sin go and feed yourself some righteousness and nourish yourself in the righteousness of God. That's all I got. Say it, nourish yourself in the righteous name of God. As I go to James, as I go to James, this is another verse how not to feed sin. Over here in James, James 4, verses, James 4, 7, and 8. And, and, and you got to understand this if you don't want to feed sin, this is what you do. 
Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So let's put it this way. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist sin, and it will die. Resist sin, and it will die. Because they said the Spirit of God will mortify the deeds of the flesh. Now, that's what he said in Romans. The Spirit of God will mortify the deeds of the flesh. It will kill the deeds of the flesh. And the only way that you can make that happen, you have to submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist sin, and he and it will die. And it will die. Then it say, and then verse 8 say, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Oh, he said, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So if you if you draw closer to God, and God is drawing closer to you, you will not be sin. You will not be sin because you will have a close relationship with God, and you're going to want to please God, and you're going to please God because your desire is going to be to please God. And when you're doing that, you will not be sin. You will not be sin. Then it says, cleanse your hands. Ye sinner, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. You understand? So that's the only thing I can tell you on how not to be sin. See, I want to help you in your Christian walk. I want you to be the best that you can be in your Christian walk, always and forever. That's why God made me this messenger of Jesus Christ. That's why God made me a messenger of this new covenant so I can help you develop a lifestyle that's in righteousness and that's pleasing to God. That's why I'm here to help you in that area. God has people in different areas to do different things, but he got me to help you with transformation because he transformed me. I am an eyewitness of what God can do. You know, see, I am an eyewitness of what God can do through Jesus Christ because he done it through me. I am an eyewitness that the Holy Spirit dwells in me and leads me every day. I am an eyewitness. I can testify about it. I can testify about it. Why can I testify about it? Because I experienced it. Because I experienced it. And I experience it daily. And the more, the more I experience it, I don't be sin. I don't be sin. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I ain't finna destroy myself. I hope you're tired of destroying yourself. I ain't finna destroy myself. But the last thing that I want to speak on on how not to feed sin is going to come out of a Ephesians 6. And it's going to be verses 11 through 18. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to read you these verses, but I'm going to tell you what the armor is. But I'm going to tell you what the armor is. That's what I'm going to tell you. And if you wear this armor, you won't be sin. And the trick to this armor is you just got to be obedient to it. <laughs> See, everything that deals with God deals with obedience. You can't take obedience out. I know a lot of people don't like to preach on obedience. They're talking about that's old school. Well, let me tell you something. That's old and new, and it's always going to be. <laughs> it's one thing that's not going to change. God words don't change. Man change. Concepts change, but the word of God is still the same. They might bring it differently, but the word of God is still saying the same thing today that it said yesterday. And it will say it forever and ever and ever. So if you want to get it right, I'm going to tell you now, you got to be obedient to God's word. It does, I mean, he even said, if you love me, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus Christ said, follow me. That means let's do the will of my Father. You got to understand what is going on in order to be do the will of the Father. You got to be obedient. And when you are obedient to the Father, when you are obedient to the Son, when you are obedient to the Holy Spirit, when you are obedient to the Word of God, guess what? You won't be sin. Because sin will die. But the last part of this is Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. And if you put on the whole armor of God and put the armor of God to work in your life, guess what? You won't be sin. You won't be sin. And verse 11 says, 
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But also that you may be able to keep your sinful nature in check. Also, if you got the whole armor of God on, you'd be able to keep your sinful nature in check. You'd be able to kill sin and live in righteousness. You understand? But you got to put on the whole armor of God. See, so you got to understand one of the armors of God is long girded about with truth. Truth. Truth is one of the armors. Truth. Truth deal with conformity. You got to understand. Truth deal with conformity. Truth is sincere, genuine. Ain't nothing about truth that's fake. Truth is not a deception. You understand? It's real. See, you got to put on real. You got to be real with yourself, and you got to be real with Jesus Christ. You got to be real with the Word of God. You got to be devoted. So you got to put on truth. And then the next one would say, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, how do I put on the breastplate of righteousness? You do what's right with God. You be obedient to God. What God said is right. That's what you live by. And that's how you put on the breastplate of righteousness, by doing what's right with God. He said, believe in Jesus Christ and make him your savior. That's the first part of putting on the breastplate of righteousness. You got to keep the faith in God's righteousness. So you got to live by God's laws or rules of conduct that's in the spirit. So that's putting on the brass plate of righteousness, doing what's right in the sight of God. And then he said, put on the gospel of peace, the gospel of peace, the good news of peace, the information of peace. So otherwise he's telling us that we need to be peaceful with people. We need to establish peace with people. Not frustration, not strife, not fight, not backbiting, not gospel, none of that. He said, put on the gospel of peace. So that means to be peaceful with people. And you should have the gospel of peace in you because when you got Jesus, you got the Holy Spirit, and one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace. So that means you got peace in you as well. You got tranquility in you as well. Recognize that. Then he said, above all, taking the shell of faith. Taking the shell of faith. So you understand, you got to utilize faith. That's what you got to do. You got to utilize your faith. You got to have confidence in God, in Jesus, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit. You got to have confidence in that. So you got to be assured within yourself about it. Got about the Godhead and God's Word. You got to have confidence. You got to be assured within yourself. And then you got to trust it. Then you got to trust. And where there's trust, there's commitment. So you got to trust. I mean, you got to commit. I mean, you got to commit to God, to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. That means you got to commit. And then you got to accept. See, you got to accept. I'm saying it backwards. But then you got to accept that. You got to accept Jesus. You got to accept the Word. You got to receive what He's done given you. You got to accept it and allow it to work in your life. And then you got to assume <laughs> that it's true. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to take the word assume out. Because you should be at the notion in your life now where you should know. That is true. You should know that Jesus is true. You should know that the word of God is true. You should know that God is true. You should know that the Holy Spirit is true. And you got to know this. And that's what faith is all about. So you got to put on the shield of faith. And then you got to put on the helmet of salvation. The helmet of deliverance. You got to believe that you've been delivered. You got to know within your mind, in the heart of your mind, that you've been saved, that you've been delivered, that you've been free. You got to put on the helmet of salvation that's in Christ Jesus. So in order to put on the helmet of salvation that's in Christ Jesus, you got to get a mind like Christ. And you got to live it out. Your mind has got to be about God. That's your helmet of salvation. Your mind has got to be set on Jesus. You can't have a mind set of sinning. 
You got to have a mindset of righteousness according to God. I'm talking Christian perspective. I'm talking Christian's perspective. And then he said, in the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you got to use the word of God because it's the sword of the spirit. It's a fight things all for you. So you got to apply the word of God in your life. You got to speak the word of God in your life. You got to make the word of God your life. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. So Jesus is the word. Uh, the letters that Paul wrote is the word. The gospel is the word. And you got to let these work in your life, the word of God. And then the next one is praying always. So, you know, Paul said pray without ceasing. So he's saying praying always. That's another armor to help you not sin, help you not feed sin. You got to pray always with all prayers, but in this word prayer here, I'm looking at requests, and with all requests and supplication. In this word supplication, I'm looking at sincerity. I'm looking at humbleness. That's what I'm looking at. So it's saying praying always with all requests and sincerity. So he said, be be real with your prayer. Be real with your request. Don't be faking it. <laughs> he said, let it be from the heart and let it be sincere. See, God got a way of blessing you that I can't understand. But how not to feed sin, I just told you. And I tell you, if you apply this in your life, I can tell you today, you will sin less and grow righteous. And you will grow righteous. And you will grow righteous. Because if you stick with Jesus and you keep the faith, you're going to grow past this. You're going to grow past that you might stumble here but he gonna pick you right back up and then you're gonna remember how he picked you up and you're gonna take another step and he's gonna pick you up he's gonna take another step he's gonna pick you up and you can't do nothing but have your hope in jesus you can't have nothing but your expectancy in jesus you can't have nothing but your expectancy in the holy spirit and you know that your sin life has been destroyed day by day day by day in another way you understand last but not least in another way you got to understand this in order to in, in order not to feed sin you got to do this too you got to deny yourself pick up your cross and follow Jesus so you got to deny yourself and pick up your cross you know the cross is your death <laughs> you mean you died to self <laughs> that means you don't exist no more because you are a new person in Christ Jesus and then you got to follow Jesus then you got to be like Jesus then you got to follow the new covenant then you got to follow Jesus because Jesus is the new covenant <laughs> you got to follow Jesus because Jesus is the new covenant and I tell you if you do that you will not sin your sin will die down. You will not feed sin anymore, but you will feed your righteousness and you will grow in your righteousness. And I hope this word was a blessing. I hope God bless you. I hope you understand it. And I hope it touch you because we serve a mighty God. We serve a gracious God and we serve a loving God. And may God continue to bless you. I hope you had a nice week and I hope you have a blessed week this week. And I hope this word was a blessing. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. As you know, on my timeline, I got more videos there. Feel free to watch them. Go back as far as you want and let God work with you. And I hope he bless you in every way of your life because Jesus just want to save you. And God just want to save you because both of them is our Savior. And both of them made it possible for us to have the Holy Spirit. So I just want to say thank you, Jesus. And I want to say thank you, God.